One of your most asked questions is how do you get tack sharp images, especially when it comes to groups, when you're shooting wide open on a prime lens. In this video, I'm gonna show you how. My name is Pai, and I'm one of the founders of Lynn and Jersa Photography and SLRLounge.com. We're teaming up with Adorama to bring you a new series of photography tutorials called Master Your Craft right here on Adorama TV. So let's dive in. What's up, friends? My name is Pa. Welcome to Adorama TV. This is Master Your Craft, and today we're talking tack sharp images when shooting wide open. I've got five tips and steps for you all. Let's go ahead and jump straight in. Number one, whenever you're posing more than one person for groups, you want to make sure that everybody is lined up perfectly on the same plane. Now, the easiest way to do this is to actually walk right to the side of them, looking at their profiles and making sure that you kind of move them forward or backward just to get their faces on the same focal plane. I also like to explain to them what I'm doing and I'll say, look guys, I'm shooting with a wide aperture. What that means is that the depth is very shallow. If anybody is in front or behind, you're gonna be blurry. They're not gonna know what it means if you just say I'm shooting with a wide aperture. So make sure you explain. If anyone's in front or behind, you're gonna come out a little bit blurry. Once they line up, you're gonna do that final little test and then get to it. And then you're gonna go to step two. And this is to use pixel-based focusing systems. Now, if you're on a mirrorless camera, say for example, an EOS R, a Sony A7R4, a whatever, any of the mirrorless systems, you're generally gonna be using pixel-based focusing already. But if you're on, say, an older DSLR, like for example, a Canon 5D Mark IV or 5D Mark III, you wanna make sure you turn on Live View and shoot using Live View, because this is when you get pixel-based focusing, which does a much better job of tracking focus than using through-the-lens focus systems when shooting wide open. Number three, if you got face and eye detection, make sure it is turned on. See, once the group is all lined up, you wanna make sure that that focus is placed directly over the face, and if there are eyes, even better. Place it right over the eyes. Number four, I want you to understand distance, and namely, the further you are back, then the more leeway you have in this focal plane. So on, say, for example, a 50 millimeter that I have on this EOS R, well, if I'm standing, say, 10 or 15 feet back, I have a little bit more wiggle room in that plane of focus than I would if I was only five feet away from the group. So the closer you get, the more things have to be really perfect. And you have to take into consideration, as you step closer, the distance between each person in that group is gonna slightly vary. So give yourself a little bit more working room, step back just a little bit more, and understand the lens that you're working with. And this brings me to tip five, which is to really know the lens. See, on the RFL 50 millimeter, I know that at f1.2, I can still get a really sharp image out of the camera. But that's not the case on all primes. A lot of primes, they're gonna end up being a little bit too soft when shooting wide open. So understand the lens that you have and know that when you're shooting wide open, the image is always gonna be a little bit softer than when you stop down by two or three stops, for example. Know that if you're working with a lens that tends to get out of focus towards the edges, don't shoot a group shot wide open. It's just not a good idea. You can stop it down a bit to f2 or f2.8 or wherever you need to go to make sure that that lens, that prime, is gonna give you edge to edge sharpness with a larger group. Now putting all of this into practice, I want you to take a look at these family portraits because all of these were shot at f1.2. And when you put all these steps into play, not only are they gonna be sharp at a distance, but even when stepping in a little bit closer, still shooting wide open, the images are still sharp. Granted, practice with this, especially when you're talking about clients. Don't try something like this your very first time on a paid shoot. I want you guys to practice these techniques master them, and then take it onto your paid sessions. Now here are three bonus tips. Do not, and I repeat, do not shoot wide open when you're shooting journalistically. See, when it comes to shooting portraits and your subject is holding still and you're trying to aim for this kind of stuff, it's great. You can go for this artistic, super shallow depth of field, but when shooting journalistically in the moment, well, you're gonna get a lot of blurry images. So if you've got a bride and groom walking down the aisle, whatever it is, don't shoot that wide open. If you do, you better know your gear and know that the focus can actually keep up. 
I usually like to stop down a little bit. So on a 2470, I'm usually shooting at f2.8 when they're coming down. I know that at that point on a lens like the 2470 that focuses very quickly, I know that shooting wide open, I can still get tack sharp images with each click. If you're shooting sports, you're going to want to stop down. If you're shooting anything action, you're going to want to stop down. When you've got moving subjects and you're shooting journalistically, don't shoot at f1.2 or wide open. Number two, I want you to verify sharpness. Now I'm very comfortable with this technique. And even then, whenever shooting wide open, especially with group shots, I'm still just gonna double check each and every image to make sure that I have good expressions and that they're tack sharp. And if it's not, I will stop down a little. If I notice that my lens is getting a little bit soft or miscalibrated, I will stop down right in that moment, as opposed to getting back to the studio and realizing that half of these shots are out of focus. Bonus tip number three, keep in mind that depth is a wonderful compositional tool, but it's only one of many compositional tools available to you. From lighting to compositional techniques like leading lines, framing, symmetry, all that kind of stuff, depth is one of these pieces in addition to expression and everything else. When you rely on every single image to be shot wide open so that your background is blurred, you're gonna end up with a portfolio of images that look rather similar and kind of boring. So use depth, it's a wonderful tool. Just don't lean on it as your compositional crutch. That's it folks. Hope y'all enjoyed. Please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the Adorama TV channel. I'd love to see you guys here each and every week. Make sure you turn on notifications so that you know YouTube knows that, yeah, I subscribed, but it wasn't a mistake. And uh, I do actually want to be notified when videos go up. In the meanwhile, I'd love for you guys to follow me on TikTok at Born Uncreative or on Instagram at Pi Jirsa. You all can check out more of our professional education as well at srloungeworkshops.com. In the meantime, I'll see you guys back here, same time, same place on Adorama TV. Peace.